Monsters, it's just me, Ghetto Mama, a.k.a. Leslie Singer, Leslie Singer, a.k.a. Ghetto Mama. Look at this big old girl. Woo-woo. Anyway, um, I didn't finish my story about the alien thing, and I didn't have my dessert yet, and I think I should have my dessert and finish my story about the alien. But first, I'll show you what I have for my dessert. I have a piece of the... Louisiana um, cream cake, which I think it's like more or less um, lemon cake, and some chocolate cream cake. And this bunch of stuff here is cherry pie. And all this was like on sale. And I got the generic Cool Whip type of stuff, the store brand. So let's see what this cherry pie is. I like that song, that rock and roll song. About cherry pie. Oh my god. See, after tonight, I probably won't have any more of this stuff just because of my diet. And tomorrow is a weigh in. And I'm really scared. <laughs> I better lose some weight while I'm sleeping, right? And this is very unusual. Usually I only drink one of these a day, but got to have some of this with this. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Holidays. God bless. Just drink the crap, right? Oh, I'm drunk on milk. Anyway, um, back to my story. My camera had cut off on me. And, um, I was starting to say when I was a little kid, <clears throat> I think I was like about nine, nine or ten, something like that. Anyway, one night I got woke up because there was really bright light shining in at my window. And I used to sleep in the same room with my grandma because my grandpa came back from the war and he was a little bit and he didn't like to sleep with anybody because he didn't trust anybody hmm wait I just hit myself with a paper towel anyway so him and my grandma slept in different rooms and I slept in the room with my grandma anyway the bright light came in and um I was scared and I was looking at it because I didn't know what it was and I was like, you know, kind of hiding and looking at it and everything. So <clears throat> I heard heard um, my uncle upstairs and he was like moving around because his bedroom was like kind of on the same, it was on the same side of the house my, and my grandma's bedroom was on. Anyway, the next day, he, he got up and he was telling everybody, did you see the bright light that came through the window last night? And I'm just a little kid, so I'm not going to say that I seen it or not because I was too scared. I was just listening. Anyway, my uncle's um, side of the house, there was like a porch. He, he, he stayed upstairs. And it's like his bedroom. Then you can go out his window onto the porch roof. So he was telling my grandma, my grandma and my grandfather that there was some kind of bright light that came into his room that woke him up. And he went out the window to see what it was. And he said it was so bright that he had to go back in and lay down on his bed. But he said he started to feel dizzy. And, um... He claims that he never made it to his bed, that he passed out on the porch, the porch roof. Now, see, I don't know if any of this is true, but this is my recollection of when I was a little kid and remembering this stuff, okay? So, my grandparents, they're like, no, you didn't see any light. Are you crazy? You know, that kind of stuff. But... 
he said that he woke up in the morning and he was in his bed. And my grand grandparents also said, oh, you were probably dreaming. And see, I should have piped up as a little kid and said, yes, I seen the light too. But I couldn't because if I did pipe up and say that, who's going to believe a little kid, right? Don't think that I'm just hearing what my uncle said and, you know, going along with it. But there was a bright light. But I don't know what happened. Or anything. And then a few nights later, I had this really big in my ears. My ears and my head start ringing really loud. I don't know what it was. And I was like, you know, going like this. I was just a little kid. I was making this really weird noise and I was like really scared and see if I would say something in the night my grandparents would get mad so in the night if I have a problem I have to deal with it otherwise I get my butt whipped because ain't nobody waking my grandparents up especially no little kid and my grandparents didn't like me anyway long story but we won't go there tonight with that anyhow Anyway, I heard that buzz. I went back to sleep. And a few nights later, I woke up and I thought I heard somebody breathing like, <sighs> like that. So, you know, I'm a little kid thinking, what is that? I'm scared again. And the, my grandma kept her door open because my grandfather slept in the living room on a rollaway bed that we rolled up in the daytime. And I can hear my grandfather snore. And I looked over, and my grandma, she was sound asleep. She's kind of snoring too, but I still heard this noise. And then I looked out towards the doorway, and I kid you not. Now, this is a little kid thinking this, okay. And I've grown 58 year old woman. As I am now, but this is a little kid thinking this. I swear to God, I seen like a Bigfoot figure lurking in the doorway of me and my grandma's bedroom. And it had orange eyes and it was looking at me. And I was so scared, I put the blanket up, up over my head. And you know how when um, somebody's coming closer to you, you can kind of like feel their energy? I felt this. And I don't know what happened to me, but I was really scared and all that type of stuff. And I think I was so scared I fainted. Because the next morning, well, this was in the summertime. I didn't go to school. school. Well, the next morning, my grandma tried to wake me up, and I wouldn't wake up. And she let me sleep till like 10 o'clock in the morning. And she goes, are you okay? What's wrong with you? And try to wake me up. And I was so groggy and everything. And I had these weird rash marks on the calf of my legs. It was strange. But I don't know what happened. And then every once in a while, this same image in the doorway came to me. And it was so scary. And uh, my uncle later... Later on in years, like after I was an adult, like in my mid-twenties, I'm trying to get this pie, this thing's like moving all over. Anyway, later on he said that he was abducted by an alien. Was he? I don't know. He died of leukemia when he was 38 years old. So let's see, I'm 58, 38... So I was like 28 years old when he passed away, I think. I don't know. I have to figure out the math later. But anyway, so I can't question him to find out. And my grandparents, they've passed on too, so I don't know. But anyway, that's my story. One story of an alien account that I think. My next story is. 
when I was a teenager, my friend and I, Sheila, she had a little yellow, I mean, a little, um, like an olive green Mustang. And, uh, we were in high school, and I was riding with her, and we were going somewhere to a place called Creston, which is not far, this is in Ohio, going to a place called Creston, which is not far from where I used to live as a kid, teenager. Anyway, um, we are going through Seville, that's the town before Creston. I don't remember why we went out there. Maybe we had to take something to somebody or something. I don't remember what. Anyway, there was this guy in the street, and he had an army jacket on. And he was in Seville. And Seville's like a four. When you come up into the middle of Seville, it used to be. I haven't been there for a really long time, so it might be different now. But there's like a four-way stop right there in the middle of town. And the store had the strobe light going. And this guy was in the street with an army jacket, green army jacket. And he walked up onto the sidewalk and then he started jumping across the strobe light like he's playing jump rope. Okay. So we're sitting there waiting for the light to turn red. And me and Sheila were teenage girls and we're going like, oh my God. We're the only people here. And it's like... 12 o'clock at night, 12.30, something like that, midnight. And we're hoping that this light hurries up and changes. Sheila's a goody two-shoes. Now, see, if I would have been driving, I would have just blown that light when I got scared, looked, seen if anybody was there or not. But Sheila wouldn't do that. Anyway, the dude was obviously high or something. He was, like, playing jump rope with this strobe light. Okay, so the light turns. And then we start approaching Creston, which is like five, six miles from Seville. And there's all the train tracks. An enormous amount of train tracks in Creston. Well, we had to stop at the one train track because the things were down. I was going ding, 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 but we didn't see any train anywhere. And we're sitting there going, come on, train. Where are you looking, you know, back and forth where the train was at? And off ahead in the distance, we seen somebody walking on the street. And we're like, dang. Because, you know, this is all country roads, right? I mean, there's farms, like maybe half a mile, fourth of a mile apart. Pretty far apart. There's like farms or just empty fields. Anyway, we're sitting there waiting for this thing to go up so we could cross the track. Well, it finally went up so we crossed the track and as we got closer to this person walking in the road and it was the same damn guy that was jumping in the strobe light. I kid you not. And we got up got up and he's looking at us on the street and she was like, oh my god, he was just down there. How did he get over here? <clears throat> but it was the same guy. I swear it was the same guy. So we blew past him because we were like really scared. And then here comes another train track. And this time the thing was blinking, but the things didn't come down. The little arms that come down. So we stopped in front of the train track because, we, you know, maybe the train's coming. We don't see it, whatever. So we stopped. And then all of a sudden, the back of her Mustang went down. I mean, you know how Mustangs, kind of the front end sits a little low? And all of a sudden, it went down like that. And there was the guy on the back of the Mustang. We were tripping. We were flipping out. We we're like, oh my God. I told Sheila. I said, I don't care. Let's get out of here. She had a stick shift. So she tried to get out of here real quick, you know. Guess what happened? The thing, because she didn't do the clutch right. And she had to restart it. And meanwhile, this thing, or this guy, 
was on the back of the Mustang. I kid you not. A light coming. But we've seen his silhouette. We've seen a light. We've seen his silhouette of him on the back. And as the light got closer, it was a car coming up. And then all of a sudden, from the like the nose is up and the back is down, the car just leveled out back to the way it was before. You know, he got on the back of it, and we got across the track. We were so scared. We went and did whatever we did. I don't remember. I think we went to her sister or her brother's house or something to give something. Excuse me, I belched. To deliver a message or something. I'm not sure, but. <clears throat> we were flipping, freaking out, scared to go back home. So. When we left. To go back home, I said, listen, Sheila. I just want to get home. I don't care if the train is coming. I don't care if we're getting a red light. But if we can go, we're not stopping anywhere. We're just going. She agreed, and she took me home. And I lived in an old farmhouse. And the farmhouse was like the driveway was long, and I had to walk up this hill. And the whole time I'm walking up this hill, I swear to God, I thought something was looking at me. And I thought, okay, so if I run... And there's like a stray dog because we had like a lot of stray dogs in my neighborhood. I thought well, if I run, it's going to chase me. So I'm trying to walk real bold up to the house and everything. So I get up to the house and get inside the kitchen door because that's what the door that I had to go into. And it's like I just like collapsed on the kitchen floor just sat there. It was so scary. I don't know. I'm getting weirded out telling this story, but it's true. I swear it's true. I got all kinds of weird stories to tell. And they are true. Hmm. Back to this cake. This is really good. Although I'm not going to have any more of this stuff tomorrow. I might have a, a few cookies, a cookie a day. I don't think that's really going to matter, but I can't do what I did today. Mm -mm. That was just way too much food. I'm going to do a weigh-in tomorrow and uh, see what damage I've done to myself. But, because I've eaten so much today... <clears throat> I'm probably going to be holding water. By the time I do my way in in the morning, stuff ain't going to go through the pipes. If you know what I mean. So, <laughs> it might be a false weigh-in. So maybe Wednesday I should weigh in instead of tomorrow. In fact, Wednesday I'm going to weigh in. Because tomorrow it won't be unfair. I mean, it will be unfair. It won't be accurate. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Real life. Had to blow my nose or I'm going to sneeze a million times. I've been sneezing today. I don't know. Anyway. This was delicious. Christmas dessert. And um, thanks for having Christmas dinner with me. And hope you guys had a really good Christmas and everything. And I just want to say thanks, gangsters. I will see you next week. Muck bang.